Oh, g'day. My name is John, and this is another video in a series of videos that I'm doing on these uh, little Chinese diesel air heaters. And the subject today, I want to speak a little bit more about the controllers for these heaters. Now, there are basically, I suppose, um, four or five different types of controllers, you know, going from the simple type here to a little bit here um, to a basic LED one and to the one with a lot of functions and features on it. But first, on this little one here, now, a lot of people want just something very, very simple, and you can get it in a, in a, a little controller like this. So it's very easy if you just want to turn it on. Um, you just put the um, on button here. You can see the little red lights come up, and um, so, what it does here, it tells you the heater setting and, and just by turning the heater up or down you can adjust the number of um, red lights and the, and the amount of heat that you're, you're putting into the, into the heater. So this is very very simple sort of heater um, or a controller and for those who don't want the more complex one this is the, the best one for you, you just turn it on and turn it off and then just, just the heat by the knob. From there, you go to this little sort of controller, and um, the issue with this one is a cheaper, nasty sort of controller, which is going to create um, issues for you. And I'll we'll speak a bit more about this one a little bit later on. We come to this sort of sort of controller, and here we can adjust the uh, the pulse the pulse rate up and down we can also go across and, and uh, get some different parameters you know we can we can look at the temperature um, the pulse rate um, we can get the error codes etc and from there we move up into this more sophisticated controller. Now, this controller is a full function sort of controller. It gives you a whole heap of information. It tells you when the fan's going. It'll tell you when the glow plug turns on. It'll tell you when the fuel pump is on. It'll tell you if you've got a flat battery. You can set different parameters, like you can turn it on at a particular time. Uh, you can turn it off at a particular time. You can go into it and set a maximum pulse rate. You can go in and set a maximum fan speed. And with this controller, you can also add a remote. Now, going up from this controller, there is a newer version on the market, which I don't have one at the moment, which is like here. So it's, it's basically the same the same um, circuit board and everything like that. It's just got it set up in a different um, format. Instead of the buttons going up and down on the on the side, it, the uh, buttons go across the bottom. With the good controllers, what you'll see is you'll see a hole in the top, like here, with what looks like a little pinhead inside, and it's a thermistor in there. And so, once you set the the volume, sorry, the um, I don't know the uh, the temperature. It will then the thermistor here will then recognise that temperature, and then what it will do is it will hold the temperature at that particular setting. So this one's got one. This one here has one in the bottom, and this controller here has one in the top here. Now this, this one here, this little cheap and nasty controller has, has no thermistor in it and it does not give you a control of the pulse rate. So you can't do the pulse rate or anything like that, but there's more trouble with this one and I'll come back to it in a minute. Now, as I said before, with this particular controller, you can buy a remote. Now, one thing to check on when you're buying a remote, there's a number of people have complained that they couldn't get the remote 
to pair with the um, the uh, controller. And the main reason is is there was no battery in it. So if you buy one of these as a, a spare part, you can get it. You know, you can get them like this. They come with a spare part, so you get the controller and the remote. They will not come with a battery. And so one way to check if you've got a battery is to just press and if it's got a battery you'll see a little the little blue light come on now you get these controllers with two sorts now this one here is a two button controller and this one here is a four button controller so not only can you turn it on and off but you can actually adjust the temperature up and down um, you know you might want to do that from the bed or whatever but just be aware that if you buy these as a spare part and also sometimes when they come with the kit there will be no battery now they will not even tell you what the battery type is so you will be in all sorts of trouble trying to find one now it is a 12 volt battery that goes into these these remotes and it's an a27 battery so you can buy these um, at a hardware store or whatever I bought a couple of these from our local hardware store Bunnings I think for about uh, a few dollars but just be aware that first thing you do is, is push the little button if there's no battery like there's no battery in this one no light comes on if you don't have the light come on then you've got no battery now to replace the battery is fairly simple you'll need a jeweler screwdriver you take out these little screws in the back and you put the battery in just be careful when you do that because the um, the buttons here will tend to fall out on you now the next thing I'd like to talk about is the um, the wiring now even when off these controllers always have the LED turned on so it doesn't matter whether it's this type or this type or this type the LEDs are always turned on and you've got two issues here the first if this is in a um, um, a bedroom or something like that then you're going to have a quite a bright light shining in your eyes if it's probably out in the saloon or in the uh, the galley where you've got it then perhaps it's not so bad and it can act as a night light this one here gives a very very dull light and it is not annoying but this one here can be a little bit annoying now the other issue that you'll have is that if you're using basically any of these they're always drawing current and it depends on what type you're using this one here because it doesn't have um, you know the big LED supply uh, display draws about 0.08 to 0.09 of an amp whereas this type here this type here draws about um, 1 point, uh, a 0.14 to 0.15 of an amp now what that means in the real world is that if you leave your heater on which most people do and particularly this type here because you'll leave it on because you if you particularly if you've got it set up for starting and stopping at a particular time you'll that you've set already set the timers on it and you don't want to turn it off and then each each time you want to use the heater you got to turn the timers on again so a lot of people tend to leave this one on but if you forget to turn it off and you leave the caravan or you leave your motor home that to put this in real world context most people in their um, motorhome caravan or whatever seem to have about a 100 amp hour house battery now if you go away and you leave the um, the van the caravan for a period of time this type here will flatten that battery in about two to three weeks whereas this one here will totally flatten that battery in about um, one and a half to two weeks so you need to be aware of that now even if you've got a, a, um, a lithium ion battery where you can draw down to about 80 percent of the amp hour capacity against 50 percent of the amp hour capacity to a lead acid sort of battery this type here will still flatten your battery um, in about two to three weeks 
and something you need to be aware of. Let's say you've got a higher capacity, you might have 200 amp hour batteries. Well, you're still going to flatten the battery in four weeks. So, you'll need some sort of switch to turn it off and turn these um, completely off, not just here. But what you have to be careful of there is that first you have it so the heater cannot be turned off accidentally. You ha when you turn it off, it must be turned off through here, through the controller, and it'll do its rundown cycle. And sometimes that can take up to five minutes to do a rundown cycle. If you don't, these heaters will rapidly overheat. Now, I accidentally, in one of my tests here, I accidentally knocked the, uh, the, the cable off the battery and it did immediate shutdown. Now, I, I was lucky, I, was, I knew that I'd done it and uh, by the time I got over to the heater, removed the knob, took the top off to allow some fresh air in. This is the electronic control unit. And if you look here, in just that short period of time, it badly melted the plastic here where it was screwed down to the uh, to the heater. And if thankfully this one didn't fry, but if I was only probably only another 60 seconds longer, it would have fried the the transistors in this um, in this control unit. And that is a problem that people have if they accidentally turn off the heater. You will fry the control unit. Okay, now I'd like to talk about this controller. Now, I when I bought this particular heater, this is an aluminium case heater, and I bought this to do a, a bench test and compare the difference between whether you had an aluminium case heater or whether you had a plastic case heater and what the differences were. When I ordered this particular heater, it came with this sort of controller. Now this is a pretty good basic LED sort of controller. It allows me to do manual control on it. Um, it also, uh, if you're setting it up in a, um, a caravan or something, it, you can set the temperatures on it. But when the heater arrived, and it, it, I would really like to have recommended this um, supplier of this heater because they were very, very efficient. It came in about four bit working days and the eBay supplier was very prompt in re replying to my messages and what have you. But anyway, when it arrived, instead of coming with this controller, it came with this controller. Now the problem is, first, it had no pulse rating. So when I do my, my test, I set them up and I you know, start off at a, a pulse rating of 1.6 hertz, then I work it up to 5.5 hertz. That way I can compare the different heaters and, uh, with the same parameters. But this one didn't. You only had, I think it was four settings. You, could, you had a manual setting, you go up and down. So I thought, no problem. I'll just plug in one of these, or I'll just plug in one of these controllers. Well, straight up I got an error code. And um, when I looked it up, it said that there was a compatibility with the wiring. So there's a wiring problem. So then I came and had a look at it. And sure, there was a wiring problem. So I'm not quite sure if you can see here. I'll just see if I can put these, these up here. Now, look here. The wiring code is totally opposite to the standard. Now this is a standard wiring code. This is a, this is a positive lead. So they've got, the, instead of the positive lead here, they've got the sense lead in here and the positive lead down on the bottom. So this then created a problem because all these Chinese heaters come with this standard wiring. This particular controller comes with a separate wiring so you cannot plug in any of these other controllers. Now, not only that, if you have a problem with this, you cannot buy these online. So you can't buy them as a spare part. Whereas you can buy these as a spare part, or these as a spare part, or these as a spare part, and these go from about, I suppose this type here goes from about $9 to $15 as a spare part. This type here goes from about, uh, I don't know, $15 to $25 as a spare part. 
But if you have an issue with your heater or you want some better control of it, you can't buy these as a spare part. So I wrote to the supplier and a lovely girl who gave the English name of Ellie replied to me almost immediately and um, was, was apologetic and wrote to the factory who supplied her these heaters. And without her knowledge, they put in this controller with the different wiring, the non-standard wiring. Now, as I said, she was so efficient and, and so lovely and so prompt in replying to my problems that I would have loved to have recommended her as a supplier, particularly in Australia, because they had an Australian warehouse, to buy these heaters off her. But I can't do that if they're coming with this type of controller. Now, what if you do if, um, have something like this, all is not lost because what Ellie did for me, she gave me a $50 refund. Um, I paid about $155, $160 for this heater. She gave me a $50 refund. Well, that allowed me to buy a separate ECU and to buy a separate controller. So I could now make this heater as a standard heater, similar to all the other Chinese heaters. But I just want to make you aware that be careful if you're buying this sort of controller, if you buy a heater with this sort of controller, that it, and just check the wiring and it has non-standard wiring. This will create you a problem in the future if you have some problem with the heater. Okay, the, the heater's up and running. Um, I can adjust the pulse rate here. Look here, it's up, up to proper temperature. Lovely little controller, it gives you all the, all the information that um, you particularly want. So we can, I can up the, the pulse rate manually or the heat manually. But what I want to show you is what happens if we disconnect this or this controller fails. So I'm gonna disconnect it here. Now, you can probably hear the heater in the background what happens is nothing happens. So you're going to need a contingency plan in the rare occasion that your controller fails. Because if the controller fails, the heater will not shut down, it will continue to run at that last setting that you had it on. Now, remember, as I said before, if you go then to the master switch and you switch the master switch off, then you're gonna have a problem with the meltdown of the electronic control unit. So now perhaps, you know, you can put another controller and now we can switch it off. And all is good, but a lot of people wouldn't have spare controllers around. The, the other thing I forgot to mention as at these controllers, these three controllers, all show up error codes. So this one will come up on the LED screen. But even this little um, simple manual controller, if you've got the error code, the number of lights here will flash. So if it's an error five, then five of these little lights will, will come on and they will flash so you can do the error codes. So this controller, this controller, and this controller are excellent controllers try and stay away from this sort of controller. Okay, well I hope that gives you a little bit more insight into the operation of these heaters and the operation of the controllers. And thank you for watching.